Zelensky said that the long expected second phase of Russia's war in his country had begun. We we're just hearing what that might look like and that Ukrainians would not surrender and carry on fighting the Russian army. Uh, William, your column today discusses how throughout the war, Ukraine has forged itself a national identity that perhaps often happens in major conflicts. But you sort of contrast that with France, the US and Britain, where liberal democracy is under mortal threat. What do you mean by that? What's the nature of that threat? Well, I, I mean that, yes, while we're giving a lot of good help to Ukraine, uh, look at what's happening in France. Uh, it looks like something like 45% of people are going to vote for Marine Le Pen. And look what's happened in the United States. Uh, last year, the, the storming of the Capitol uh, by Trump supporters, and Trump is still riding high again. Uh, he, he could even be re-elected again in a couple of years' time. Uh, now, if those sorts of things happen, if people like that get elected, then a lot of our democratic values are in question. People are starting not to believe election results, not to believe, uh, not to believe true facts, as it were, to believe alternative facts about the world. This is very dangerous to democracy. So I'm saying, yes, this is very good that we are helping Ukrainians in a war. But let's learn from them now about the recreation of their national identity of who Ukrainians are. We have to know who Americans and French and British are in our democracies and what we stand for. And that means a lot more civic participation and that is one of the things it means in terms of bringing people together from many different backgrounds. I keep wishing the government and other political parties would support that. But does it not also, I mean, maybe you need an, a common enemy and not just an enemy of, uh, um, in diplomatic terms, a real life mortal threat to you. That's what creates national identity, uh, perhaps in a way that you wouldn't want to see created in, in the UK or France or the US. Well, yeah, of course it is. And that, and that would be true of Britain in the Second World War uh, and so on. Of course, that reinforces national identity. But you don't have to wait for that in order to have a more cohesive society where people of different backgrounds are, understand each other better and work together more. Uh, and political parties moderate some of their tendencies to make sure they can represent the great majority of the interests of the great majority of the country. You can be getting on with these things and trying to do these things in peace. Time. And so I'm, I'm just drawing attention to that contract. Why wait for a war to improve national identity, healthy national identity and democracy? And if the Ukrainians had had a stronger sense of that before, they would have been less vulnerable, actually. They'd have been less vulnerable to Putin saying they're not really a country and they're going to let me in if I kick at the door uh, because they're so divided. Now, he's got a great shock. It's turned out not to be like that at all. But he was able to think that because Ukrainians, as I point out in my column, really squabbled among themselves for the last 30 years. Um, just a reminder to everyone, you can watch uh, our conversation on YouTube. Just go uh, to the Times' YouTube channel, Times Radio's YouTube channel, rather, and you can uh, see our conversation. Uh, Kezia, um, uh, Willie makes the point about Le Pen and her popularity in France, the, the, the rise and fall and perhaps rise again of Donald Trump. You spend your day job looking at trust in government, trust in the political system. We'll talk after this about Boris Johnson's day in Parliament and the lingering problems of Partygate. Is there a problem of cynicism coming into our electorate about the validity of certain politicians or the veracity, rather, of politicians? I think the wider problem is populism itself. And that's what's represented by both Marine Le Pen and by Donald Trump and by other populist, nationalist, global leaders. Because what they do is they feed on fear <clears throat> and their politics is rooted in one of identity and emotion rather than rational evidence-based policy making. And that's the thing I, I really fear because the minute, as William says, that we start debasing the role of facts and evidence in politics, we're in really deep trouble. And I think we need to fight for a politics that's rooted in that liberal democratic tradition of evidence and truth and fact. And it's very difficult. To, to take on and defeat global populism where it exists, but it's the only route to a safe, sustainable future for us all.